let's talk about the pill because I'm getting asked the same question all the time and I'm ready to talk about it. Does the birth control pill hurt your fertility? Let's break down really easy what the birth control pill is, how it works, and why it does not affect your fertility. So if you came here for the two minute answer, there it is. It does not change your future fertility. But because you shouldn't just hear that and believe me, you should understand why this is the case. Because I think it's really important that you understand your own body. So in a nutshell, what the birth control pill does is it tells the brain to stop sending out FSH. FSH is follicle stimulating hormone and it is the hormone that stimulates an egg to grow. So if you think about your ovary, I like to use that analogy of the vault inside your ovary where all your eggs are kept. A group of them comes out every month and every egg that comes out of the vault grows inside a follicle. So FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, stimulates one follicle to grow. Inside that follicle, that egg matures and makes estrogen. When your estrogen level has been high enough, 200 picograms per milliliter for 50 hours, it triggers the brain to release LH, luteinizing hormone, which signals you to ovulate. That cyst then forms into a corpus luteum, making progesterone. And when you are in fact not pregnant because no embryo implanted, progesterone levels drop because the cyst dies. It only gets rescued by pregnancy. And then you have a period. A period is an organized bleed. This is what's happening normally. Now at the ovarian level, the eggs that have come out of the vault, they're done. They are going to ovulate or they're going to die. They can't be saved for later. And the presence or absence of taking birth control pills does not change how many eggs come out of your vault at a time, and it doesn't change how many eggs remain in your vault. First of all, there are things you can do that can hurt your fertility. So smoking is one of the top ones. I like to think about it as smoking can get inside the vault, and those toxins can drop your egg count down. And so can things that you don't have any control over. Chemotherapy or radiation, so treatments for cancer, those can get inside your vault and drop your egg count down. And sometimes really destructive diseases like endometriosis or having big ovarian cysts that have to be removed can actually drop the egg count from the vault too. We are concerned that environmental toxins and potentially things that are contaminants in food or makeup may actually do the same thing as cigarette smoke and drop our egg counts down. I think it's safest to live your cleanest, best life to protect those eggs inside the vault as long as possible. So avoiding toxins, eating clean, avoiding smoking, good things to do. But the birth control pill, do the hormones in the pill get inside the vault and change your egg count or change your fertility? Or do the birth control pills change your periods, therefore making it harder for you to get pregnant? They do not. So what happens when you're on the pill? Your eggs still come out of the vault. So your group of follicles, same number as you were going to have, get released from the vault. But because the pill has in it a form of estrogen, when your body makes estrogen, it makes a compound called estradiol. In the birth control pills, it is a synthetic estrogen. Very true, it's called ethanol estradiol. It's a very stable low dose estrogen. Ethanol estradiol tells the brain, hey, estrogen's here. You don't need to send out any FSH. And so it, it doesn't. All the eggs come out of the vault. They don't see FSH. And so they all die. End of story. Now, the other component in the birth control pill is a low dose progesterone. Very low dose, constant progesterone. There's actually a lot of different types of progesterone. So unlike estrogen, which tends to be the same compound in pills, just maybe a different strength based on the brand, the progesterones in different pills can all be a little bit different. Some help with androgen symptoms more. So you may have a greater reduction of acne on certain brands of pills than other ones, but all progesterones work by thinning out that lining of the uterus. Now this is twofold for why. One is because it helps have better period symptoms. So when you have your period and your progesterone levels drop, you are going to shed out the lining that grew from that estrogen exposure. This comes with cramping and blood flow. So by taking birth control pills, you're going to have a reduction in the growth of the lining because of the progesterone component. This means you're gonna have less bleeding per month. You're going to have less anemia. You're gonna have less cramping and you're gonna have a regular predictable light period. So these things often make women feel better. They're also going to have a reduction in PMS and PMDD, so premenstrual syndrome or depression. They're also going to have a reduction in acne or things that can be caused from an increased testosterone level. There's a lot of good benefits to the pill that have nothing to do with birth control. But what that progesterone component does do is when you go into your placebo week of your pills, you then have a period. Progesterone then stabilizes the lining. It's also called protecting the endometrium. This is because unopposed estrogen would cause endometrial hyperplasia and cancer. Because you could hear this and say, well, why even take the progesterone? Why aren't my birth control pills just estrogen only? 
And if you took just estrogen only pills, yeah, you wouldn't ovulate, but your estrogen would just stimulate the lining of the uterus to grow. And if you never told it to shed without any progesterone, you would get some endometrial hyperplasia, which are precancerous cells that could turn into cancer. If you're using the birth control pills for whatever reason, to prevent births, for a medical reason, because you like having less acne, I don't care, take the pill. But don't be afraid that it's causing a harm in your fertility later. Same group of eggs are coming out of the vault, no matter what, on the pill or off. If you're on the pill, all those eggs just die, nothing ovulates. If you're off the pill, one of them would ovulate and the rest of them die. You're still losing the eggs no matter what. So you don't have a reduction in your egg count by being on the birth control pill, no. Now what about your future fertility? I hear all the time, well, gosh, well, I've been on the pill for 10 years, so I know that's hurting my fertility. No, there's none. It doesn't cause your fertility, it doesn't hurt you at all. So just whoosh, let that worry go. And if you wanna take the pill for 10 years, what you have done is you have statistically decreased your chance of ovarian cancer significantly, in addition to endometrial and colon. So good job you on cancer prevention, but you have not harmed your fertility. How we measure fertility is something called fecundability. Fecundability is the probability of getting pregnant per menstrual cycle. So that's the most finite point we can try to measure and compare groups of women, like how many months or cycles did it take this group to get pregnant versus this group to get pregnant. And we usually look at fecundability over time. Infertility, the definition of infertility, 12 months of trying to get pregnant if you're under age 35, six months of trying to get pregnant if you're age 35 or older. So if you have failed to conceive in that time period, you now have a definition of infertility. When you look at fecundability rates in women who have come off different forms of contraception, what we are seeing with the birth control pill is there's no difference in the groups at six months. So you look at the women who've been on pills versus the women who haven't been on pills and at six months of trying to get pregnant, no difference between them. What you do see is a decrease in the fecundability ratio, so chance of pregnancy per month, the first three months, the women who've taken the pill when they come off of it. And I think what this is saying is that the birth control pill is causing a regular predictable cycle. And so you may have an underlying issue that you're not aware of that was masked, treated, you, the pill was doing its job, but you didn't understand that you had some hormonal imbalance, brain and ovary weren't talking well, that can get uncovered when you stop the pill. And people always say, the pill now caused my irregular periods, but really you had irregular periods, the pill was just kind of giving you hormones so you didn't know about it, which was fine and didn't hurt anything. But now that you've stopped them, the truth is being seen. The hypothetical reason why we see a drop in those first three months is that it takes a little while for the brain and ovary to get in sync again. You know, it's like your best friend. You stopped talking to them for 10 years and now you guys are getting on again. It takes you a few months to get your swag. So it's just taking a little bit of time to get back in sync and have them talking. But that six month interval of showing no higher rates of infertility and no difference in fecundability at six months should let us know that there's no harm in our future fertility even if we took prolonged pill usage. However, because of that first three month drop and because it takes the brain and ovary a while to get in sync and because women who may have hormonal issues did not get them discovered by taking the pill because they were treating their hormonal imbalance. If you have PCOS, go back and listen to the PCOS video that I did. However, what you're gonna see is that birth control pills weren't harming you. You were just correcting some of your own hormone imbalance by taking them. Now that you take that away, the truth is being seen. So if you've been off the pill for three months and your periods are not back like regular predictable, time to come see me or another fertility doctor or your OBGYN because that is not normal. What I recommend for patients who wanna get pregnant and they're asking about when should I stop my pill when I wanna be pregnant, what I say is stop it three months ahead of time. If you do not wanna quite be pregnant yet, stop the pill and use a backup method like a condom. And if your periods have not come back at that three month interval, go see a doctor to get your hormones checked to see if you could have PCOS, hypothalamic amenorrhea, thyroid disease, prolactin abnormalities, a variety of other things that may be underlying that you could be treated for and you wanna be when you're trying to get pregnant. Birth control pills, the estrogen and progesterone components of birth control pills are quickly metabolized and that is why you have to take them so close together. Really, for perfect use, you should be taking the pill within an hour of itself every day. And if you miss a pill or two pills or three pills, they become less effective. If these hormones lived in your body for 10 years, you wouldn't have to be like on the dot taking the pill every day at the same time. They are short living, they are cleared rapidly. Disclaimer, birth control pills are not for everybody and that's not what I'm advocating here. There can be side effects depending on the different type of pill that you're using and 
There are people who cannot take the pill. Medically, it's contraindicated for someone to take the pill. So don't hear this and go here, feel like, oh, Dr. Crawford's telling me I got to go beyond the birth control pill. I do not care if you take the pill or not. Don't care at all. But what I do care about is you being afraid of taking the pill because somebody else who's not qualified to do so is telling you that it's hurting you. That is false, okay? If somebody is telling you that taking the birth control pill is going to hurt your future fertility, please check their sources and check their credentials. Who are they and why are they qualified to give you that information? You make the decision that's right for you between you and your doctor on what your best contraceptive choice is, but know that if you wanna take the pill, don't let fear get in the way. Okay, I know you're gonna have tons of questions about birth control pills, so plop them all in the comments so we can do a follow-up pill Q&A. Obviously, this one was all about fertility, but I know there's tons of misconceptions out there, like did Nazis invent them, and is it the same as pumping estrogen into a cow, and all kinds of stuff. So whatever your question is, pop it in so we can get to those in a follow-up Q&A video. As always, thank you guys so much. I love answering these topics for you. We're growing this channel and I love hearing from you. Let me know what other topics you want to hear about. You can always get more fertility related information on my podcast as a woman. You can follow me on Instagram or TikTok at Natalie Crawford MD. Thanks.